Well, how good is it to be in church this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's right, Sharon. Come on. Well, we are in our Life Culture series at the moment as we're feasting uh, this year, which is all about being different to the world around us and feasting on God's goodness and greatness this year. And uh, we are f- very fittingly in our culture series, which says that we bring life, which means that we bring love, we bring inspiration, we bring fun, and we bring excellence. And um, the Bible calls us to live differently. And in Romans 12, 2, it says, Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. You know, this culture verse is a very important call to us as Christians to live differently. And um, talks us to, about stop living the, the way of the world, but to live Christ-like. And, um, you know, it's super important. But something in this verse that sometimes gets over, overstepped or missed. Um, yes, people in the world can actually live a good culture. But the thing that's different about Christians and about us is this part of it that says, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit. You know, we're being called to be transformed from the inside out by the Holy Spirit. You know, people in the world can actually live by the same culture code as us. They could live by life. They could say, we bring love, we bring inspiration, we bring fun, we bring excellence. But it's not the same because we're being called to live through the Holy Spirit from the inside out and be transformed by the Holy Spirit. So today we're going to look at how to live a Holy Spirit empowered life. So what does it look like to live a Holy Spirit empowered life? What does it look like? to be transformed from the inside out by the Holy Spirit, to live a life that is pleasing, is good, is beautiful and satisfying to God? Well, firstly, we look at Holy Spirit-empowered love. And we're going to look at a few people in the Bible who modelled this life culture. And so firstly, Holy Spirit-empowered love. And the first one I want to look at is Joseph in the Old Testament. Now, um, Joseph was someone who had the Spirit of God inside him. Even Pharaoh even um, said it. So he pointed it out in, in Genesis 41, 38. It says, So Pharaoh asked them, Can we find anyone like this man, one in whom is the Spirit of God? Now, If you know the story of Joseph, he was sold into slavery by his brothers. His brothers didn't quite like him at the start of the story and they sold him into slavery and faked his death, lied to their father. I don't know about you, but I'm one of six. I'm the youngest. I don't know whether uh, my siblings wanted to do this to me. I was the favourite child, a little bit like Joseph. Um, But they sold him into slavery. Yet, with the Holy Spirit empowerment... Joseph responded with love. It says later on in the story in Genesis 50, 18 to 21, it says, His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. I, am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Joseph, with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, spoke love into that situation. Now, I don't know about you. If you've got siblings, maybe you've had some run-ins with them before. Um, But if my siblings sold me into slavery, I don't know what I would say. Yet it took something special, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit for Joseph to show love and kindness to his brothers. You know, when we invite the Holy Spirit to empower us, we live a life of love. You know, some of my family, when we're sitting around the Christmas table, some of them actually don't talk to each other. Yeah. Um, and, but ne- none of them sold them into slavery. And yet they still don't talk to each other. Yet Joseph responded with 
kind words, with love, because he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. You know, I was thinking about this this morning as I was um, praying for our service and I was thinking, you know, some people pray for relationships to be restored and some people pray for love to be um, to had in families and restoration and things like that. But maybe we need to start praying for the Holy Spirit to enter into those relationships. If you've been praying for someone to change, I want to encourage you to pray for the Holy Spirit to change them. Allow the Holy Spirit to transform them from the inside out. Next, Holy Spirit-empowered inspiration. We're going to look at Joshua. And the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, with you, a man whom is the Spirit, and and lay your hands on him. God pointed out that Joshua had the Spirit of God inside of him. The Holy Spirit was empowering him. And... uh, Before this, 12 spies were sent out into the land to scope out the land and come back and bring a report. And yet all of them, except for two, Joshua and Caleb, gave a negative recount of what they had seen. And in Numbers 14, 6 to 8, it says this, Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, who were among these who had explored the land, tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, the land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Joshua and Caleb came with the Spirit of God and brought inspiration to that meeting. He didn't go, yeah, we're going to follow the trend of the other people and give a negative account. No, we're we're going to bring encouragement. We're going to bring inspiration into that meeting. I don't know about you, but I work in a job where my job is to manage uh, many people and is uh, a tough job at times. And at the moment, and especially over the last 10 months, my job has been change management and bring correction. Um, And when you are doing that, it can be actually very difficult to find inspiration in what's happening to bring inspiration to the people around you. If everything's falling apart, it's hard to bring that inspiration. But every time I walk into a meeting with someone where I know that the change has to happen, I ensure that I ask the Holy Spirit for empowerment to bring inspiration and kind words to them, to love on them, to bring the culture of the Holy Spirit into that workplace. And it's changed things in that workplace. It's changed the relationships that I've had with the people that I work with. Next, Holy Spirit empowered fun. I love to have fun. Um, Sometimes it can be hard to have fun. Uh, And especially I find my workplace sometimes a difficulty place to have fun or bring fun. Because I'm doing the job. I want to get the job done. I want to achieve what's in, in front of me. And... I was challenged recently by the Holy Spirit to go, no, no, bring your joy into this place. Bring your fun into this place. Show me in everything that you're doing. And um, there was some circumstances that were happening. There was a little bit of tension in our team. And I really just got prompted by the Holy Spirit to say, just ask the team out to go bowling and dinner. I was like, why? I don't know why. I don't want to go spend my Friday night bowling with my workmate to spend enough time with them at work. I don't want to actually hang out with them. And I just kept getting prompted. I'm like, oh, God, what are you doing? No, I don't want to. No. And then I asked them all. I said, do you want to go out bowling? And most of them turned up, which was a great thing. <laughs> Apparently, if you want to go bowling, people turn up and they want to go to dinner as well. And I thought, when we got to dinner, I thought, oh, maybe I'll get out of this early and won't have to go bowling and we can go home and I can go to bed. <laughs> um, I know. But, again, I was challenged to bring the Holy Spirit fun into that situation. And it changed things. The next week at work was a totally different culture. It was a culture of fun and joy. Jesus was full of joy 
through the Holy Spirit. It says in Luke 10, 21, at that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. You know, Jesus was full of joy, full of joy that God had revealed things to children who in those days were to be seen and not heard. Yet God revealed things to the children and brought joy into that situation and fun into that situation. Next, Holy Spirit empowered excellence. I've got lots of work stories today. I don't know why it's about work, but you know, it, hopefully it's an encouragement to you to bring Holy Spirit culture and life culture to your workplace or to your school or wherever you find yourself uh, during the week. Um, if about oh, six months ago, not, maybe not quite that, I moved to Bathurst um, to work in Bathurst midweek and uh, literally it was to turn things around because the store there that I was managing was not doing very well. And I was bringing change management, all that kind of stuff, and I was just really struggling to see the end goal, to see excellence brought into that situation. And I was like, I feel like I'm doing a whole heap of work and yet there's no change. And again, prompted by the Holy Spirit, I got a sense to pray to God for him to intervene in that situation, to bring excellence into that situation. And... It changed things. A few weeks ago, I got a phone call from the state manager because our store was the talking point of the state because it was on top of the state stats and targets and everything like that. And I got to reflect on the goodness of God and how his Holy Spirit had empowered that. We need to rely on the Holy Spirit to empower us in our day-to-day Don't get complacent, though. Don't stop asking for him to help. Because the enemy of the Holy Spirit and excellence, the spirit of excellence, is complacency. Daniel in the Bible had a spirit of excellence. It says this in Daniel 6.3. Then this, Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. Daniel had the spirit of excellence in him and he was lifted and given a hierarchy. I want to encourage you when you allow the Holy Spirit to transform you from the inside out in every circumstance, every situation you find yourself in your workplace, in your school, in your uni, God's going to move in that place. When you have a reliance on the Holy Spirit to empower you to live a life that is satisfying and good in God's eyes. So how do we ensure we are living a Holy Spirit life? How do we ensure we are being transformed inwardly to live a life that is different to the world? Firstly, invite the Holy Spirit. Invite the Holy Spirit to empower us. We need to acknowledge the Holy Spirit. It's there to help and guide us. Jesus invited the Holy Spirit to come to us. It says in John 16, 5 to 7, But now that I'm about to leave you and go back to join the one who sent me, you need to be told. Yet not one of you are asking me where I'm going. Instead, your hearts are filled with sadness because I've told you these things. But here's the truth. It's an advantage that I go away, for I don't go away. If I don't go away, the divine encourager, the Holy Spirit, will not be released to you. But after I depart, I will send him to you. You know, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be an encourager, to be a comfort, to be our strength, to be a guide. In Luke eleven thirteen, 13, it says, If you then, 
though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Now, when Jesus came to earth, it was a new covenant. The new covenant, the Holy Spirit is available to everyone. It can be poured out on everyone. And we're going to spend a moment right now in stillness, in quiet, as the team play for us. And I want to encourage you to maybe just open your hands and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you right now. If you've never invited the Holy Spirit to come into your life, maybe you want to quietly say, come Holy Spirit in that moment. And just allow God to speak to you in this moment. Invite Him to empower you. Spirit to come into this place right now. Lord, we pray that you would just send your Holy Spirit to empower us, to transform us from the inside out this morning. God, I pray right now that your Holy Spirit is speaking to people. Maybe they're hearing your voice for the first time in this moment. speaking to God, speaking to Jesus. But he's also given us the Holy Spirit so that we can be in community and fellowship with Him. For us to speak with the Holy Spirit and invite Him in. 2 Corinthians 13, 12 says, Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You know, Paul is encouraging the church in Corinth to be in fellowship with one another and to be in fellowship with not only God, but the Holy Spirit. When we're in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, we're in community with Him, when we're, we're speaking to Him, we're inviting Him into our life to help us be transformed from the inside out. Next is worship. Worship is such a powerful, powerful way for us to spend time in the presence of God, spend time in His Holy Spirit. Jesus calls us to worship in the Spirit. It's so important for us to worship and invite the Holy Spirit to move in our worship. It says in John 4, 21-24, Woman, Jesus replied, Believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do, what we do know. 
for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in the spirit and in truth. If you have never invited the Holy Spirit into your worship, I want to encourage you to invite Him as you worship. Invite Him to move in your midst. Finally, expectant faith. You know, we meet every morning, uh, every Sunday morning to pray over our service, and our team comes with expectant faith for the Holy Spirit to move in this place. You know, you turning up this morning is you coming with expectant faith, whether you realised it or not. You've come because there's something different. You're hoping that you're going to walk out different this morning. Come with expectant faith for the Holy Spirit to empower you. Acts 2, 1 to 4 says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. You know, God has given us the Holy Spirit to empower us. Come with expectant faith for Him to move. In a moment, we're going to sing Firm Foundation again. And I want to encourage you this morning to sing and worship with expectant faith this morning. Expectant faith that God can move in your midst. Maybe He wants to do something new in you this morning. Maybe you haven't raised your hands in worship before. Maybe you're getting a prompting to do that. Maybe you need to kneel in His presence this morning. Maybe you want to come down the front and kneel in His presence this morning. I want to encourage you, don't be afraid of the prompting of the Holy Spirit this morning. Don't be afraid of what God wants to do in this moment through His Holy Spirit. Maybe you're in the room and This is the first time you're hearing about the Holy Spirit. Maybe you've not said yes to Jesus before and you're unsure about what this is all about. I want to encourage you that your first step could be to say yes to Jesus this morning, to invite Him to empower you and to help you this morning. I'm going to pray in a moment. And maybe just you in that moment, you want to pray this in your heart and echo the words that I'm saying in a moment for the first time. Maybe you feel your heart beating and you feel Jesus knocking at the door of your heart this morning. He wants you to open the door to Him this morning. God, we thank You so much that You came to earth as Jesus to die for us. Lord, we thank you that you sent your only son to us. Lord, we're sorry for where we go wrong. We're sorry for when we fall short. But Lord, this morning we commit our lives to you. We commit ourselves to you and the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we invite the Holy Spirit to come right now. We invite the Holy Spirit to move in our midst right now. Lord, I just pray right now that your Holy Spirit would be evident this morning. In Jesus' name.